Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Planescape Torment, with me, Bring It Dawn. Uh, so as soon as I loaded back in, this message popped up, and, um, so yeah. The space beneath this overhanging branch is glowing softly. It seems to reveal a small brambled room beyond. You notice that the gray hair ravel plucked from her head is slowly twisting, like a corkscrew. Well, let's wait and see what the hair does. The hair slowly curls up your left arm, circles around your wrist, then wraps itself tightly around your left index finger. In response, the light beneath the arch glows brighter, beckoning you to step through. Okay, yeah, step through. Alright, so it's not actually making me yet. Alright, let's level up. Plus two intelligence gained from specialization bonus and plus one wisdom, because we finally hit level 12, which is that second threshold. Um, no, I can't. I don't think I can gain the specialization bonuses from the other classes now. I'm limited to what I get in this, in this class, but I can level up the other classes if I if I wish to. I don't, and I'm not going to. But uh, um, I might put it into charisma because this is the lowest of my my scores. Anyway, ooh, got an achievement, Master of the Art. I kind of want to go try fight some of these shadow. Uh oh. Portal went away. Um, oh, is it because these guys are showing up? Okay. Yes. Very well. All right. Well, we will do that after we fight these guys. I'm interested. To see what they're made of. I think we just killed one. Yeah. What are they call them? Creator shadow. Okay. Just gonna leave it alone for now. Probably. All right, come on, let me kill, finish killing these guys. All right. All right, now I will uh, step into the portal. That's neat looking. Anyway, this arch is made of a gnarled tree limb that has grown from the floor of the maze, then fallen into an arc. As you step up to the Ark, the space beneath the Ark glows softly. It seems to lead to some strange black barbed garden. Examine the archway. As you examine the natural arch, you notice the left side of the trunk is scored, as if someone took a knife blade and cut several notches into it. The scorings, however, don't look like they came from a knife blade. They look like slash marks, as if from someone's talons. Scratch the trunk of the tree with your fingernails and see what happens. You sink your fingernails into the bark, and to your surprise, the wood gives way beneath your nails like porridge. You dig your nails through the side of the bramble tree, and in response, the glow beneath the arch glows brightly, beckoning you to step through it. Uh, okay, we're not going to go through right. it yet. I've already read that. Stop it. Portal detected. Oh my goodness, I understand. All right. What are these? The circular plot on the floor of the maze is peculiar in that all the vegetation around it has died, except for three sickly twigs in the center. It looks as if the twigs devoured all the other vegetation around them. Examine the twigs. The twigs are thin, like grasping fingers, and they have none of the black barbs that coat the branches elsewhere in the maze. As you examine them, however, you can feel a magical vibration from them. They are like the faint vibrations you feel in the maze, but they are more insistent, like the wailing of tiny children. Uh, start humming the same tune Ravel used when she called upon the maze's power. As you begin humming, the twigs suddenly begin twisting within their dead circle, the fingers thrashing, grabbing for something. You notice instinctively, they're clutching for a black barb seed. While humming, throw one of the black barb seeds into their mist. While humming, you flick the seed into the mass of branches, and the three twigs twist around the seed with a crack, splintering it. The twigs stop thrashing, and you watch as the twigs slowly grow, thickening to become branches. As they grow, the three new branches twist around each other, and then with a crack, they snap at the base. They roll across the floor, then stop, deathly still. Pick up the three twined branches. You pick up the three twined branches, branch. It is still in your hands, but you can feel your humming strongly within it, like a heartbeat. It's obviously magical and powerful. You can feel the branch responding to your humming, so much so you were able to encourage its growth as the branches intertwined. A tremendous amount of power lies within the branch, 
a trace of Rabble's power. Perha or a trace of Rabble's power, perhaps. Um, mostly, your own force of will. You can't help but feel impressed with yourself. Take the branch. Your branch. So, and I can do it again. So what did I get? Black barbed wand. Usable only by mages. Oh, you can do different spells. Okay, and it says I can do it in here. If I put it in here. Um, I forgot the Shackles of Light does. That's probably best if I hold on to that. Uh, who needs... Stuff in there. Here you go. He said... What about this one? I wonder if I get different stuff. I don't know. How many Black Barb Seeds? I have four. Oh yeah, I wonder if uh, other people can wear these. They can, okay. You wanna wear my intestines? Cool. Alright, and um... So suppose if I get my quick slot, right? I right click it, I can... Change the spell... Change which spells cast on this item. First, place the wand into your quick item slot. Then right click on the wand to bring up the description. By selecting the abilities button, you'll be able to change the spell, which. Like in here, maybe? Oh, here we go. Black Barbed Curse, Black Barbed Shield. I don't know which one's better. It's only two spells, that's not super exciting. Alright. Alright, let's. Get a doodle. I'm gonna hold on to the um, rest of the seeds for now. I'm gone. More shat. Oh wait, are they just gonna keep coming? Get away from the darn tree. Wow, it's a twelve hitter. All right. Um. So that's our secret garden. Let's uh, let's go up here. Let's see if this is the way out. Now I have. This as well, which might teleport me to the Modron maze. I also have this portal lens that might get me out of here. I'm not entirely certain. I'm gone. It's immune to a certain weapon. I'm gonna assume that it's immune to Nordum's weapon. I guess I look at the combat log and figure it out. The space beneath this brambled arch seems to show a large desert city surrounded by great walls. This must be the prison Ravel mentioned. Alright, well fold your arms around you like a cage and leap through the portal. Quick save, I'm gonna try something real quick. Okay, okay. The portal lens appears cold and lifeless in your hands. Seems that it will not function outside the Modron cube. Alright, well, that sucks. Can I use the Modron cube? Alright, so I quick saved. Nothing happens. Alright, so you can't use it here. Done. I gotta find my way out. Oh, yeah, one thing I did want to read it, or do is read this, uh, this description. It's pretty lengthy. The Fiendish Eye of Kalimdar. A well-known and respected fiend from the Lower Plains, Kalimdar is a member of the Faded Faction and Sigil. His businesses were spread far and wide, and it is said that he had a glittering touch, for every enterprise he undertook was successful. He planned carefully, took few risks, and prospered. Occasionally, he was forced to collect on debts, which, would be a bloody under which could be bloody undertakings, but in the end, he always received his payments. One day, one of his debtors came to Kalimdar and told him he could not settle his debt with coin, but would provide something of greater worth if the fiend was interested. The man was a hedge wizard of little power, but he claimed he knew the ways of blessing a businessman's eye so that no opportunity would ever escape his sight. Kalimdar, both greedy and intrigued, agreed to accept the enchantment as payment. It worked, too well, as perhaps the wizard had intended. Kalimdar's enchanted eye soon saw opportunities everywhere. Too many to be exploited, and many others the fiend did not know how to take advantage of. 
What his blessed eye saw, his hands made broken. Every opportunity he tried to take advantage of, his ineptitude mangled. His businesses fell apart, his financial empire crumbled. He soon found himself, found himself in debt to his fellows, who had little sympathy for their former competitor. Kalimdar, unable to bear his reversal of fortune, finally plucked the offending eyeball from his socket and placed it within a cube of glass upon his mantelpiece. Then one day, the eye simply vanished. It is said the eyeball itself saw a better opportunity as a free agent, but this has never been proven. Oh, and placed within an empty eye socket. Okay. Yeah. How do I get out of here? I have to kill the rest of the shadows because I saw, I think, another shadow over here somewhere, right? Yeah, let's take these guys out. Damn it. Let her heal me up a bit so I can just be fine. That's, that's the last of the shadows that I had seen. Uh, let's try this again. Alright, let's try it again. Alright, worked that time, I think. What the heck is that thing? Off with you. Dead I am. Then Death's Kingdom has sealed its gates to us both. Arise, crone. Shh, shh, shh. Away with you. I'm dead, and no traffic with the living may I have. I care little for how you die, but I warn you for the last time. Arise, or I shall slay you where you lie. I had thought that dying at his hand would fulfill the requirements the past put forth. You cannot have thought that one would have a chance. You were indulgent to let him think he was successful. Powerful this incarnation is. And kill me he could have, but for a few tricks I possess. Fortunate was I. Fortune abandoned you the moment I found you. Has your life prepared you for what is to come, hag? I am not afraid. Not of the likes of you, ragged thing. Weak Ravel may be, but a few tricks has Ravel learned over the years. And I have known you would come. Things are a little ridiculous. No longer shall you trouble existence with your presence, witch. So we met another major player. I guess he's a major player. I mean, I have no idea what he is. He looks like the, uh... A final, final Fantasy boss or something. Like Kefka's final form. Um... Cursed Guard... Cursed Citizen? Lim Lim, Atrika. Or Tricha. The heavy gates are locked, barred, and sealed. There is a large notice pa uh, pasted on them that reads, Quarantine in effect, no passage in or out of the city. Alright, I do want to try this again. Okay, still can't use that Done. here. Because I'd really like to go back. I want to talk to her other... To Ravel's previous incarnations, because she had... She said she, that she was, um... Mebeth, Ivine, and Marta, I think? You see one of... The, one of Cursed's finest. He looks a little bored. What do you want? Don't you know there's a lockdown? 
Uh, what can you tell me about this place? We're under lockdown right now because of the plague. Don't know what's causing it, but we're quarantining sections of the town until we find out. You want something else? Um... I'd like to see the person in charge. What, the burger? He's in the administration building. Good luck getting to him, though. He don't see anyone these days. His mind's definitely going someplace else. I'm looking for a Deva. Then you're looking at the wrong end of the Great Ring, Burke. Because even if there were one here, you'd not be finding it. It'd be locked away like a miser's gold. Okay, well... Alright. Where is that going to take us? Trader's Gate Tavern. Well, that sounds fun. Cursed is a prison town filled with betrayers and words and deeds. We must take care and watch each other. Okay, who has my jink? Is it him? Or him? Or her? Or junk, not jink. Uh, let's talk to the dump caretaker. He has a unique name. You see a scruffy old man who reeks of garbage. He seems somehow more vital than most of the people in this town. More vibrant, as if he didn't quite belong here. He looks up at you as you approach, and straightens his back. Come to see... Kais? Kaisi? Heard stories of wisdom and righteousness? Examples to be set and lived by? Uh, who are you? I am Kaisi, caretaker of the town's refuse. I tend to their garbage, and in metaphor, I have seen a fair number of souls float this way as well. I am the voice that urges them to goodness, and I fear they ignore me. And what is this place? This is the town's refuse. I watch over it to hunt the vermin who pick through it. I keep it from spilling into the city, and in turn, they bring me more. <laughs> okay. What can you tell me of Cursed? It is a town that is on the brink of disaster. All manner of evil is being done here, and nothing is as it seems. All is hidden beneath a veneer of civility, but the venom scars those who breathe it in. This is a poisonous town filled with poisonous people. Uh, tell me about this dump. He leans forward conspiratorially. I have a secret entrance into the underground here, a secret place almost no one knows. There is a way into the undercity, he pauses, but I have never used it. Should I go down, I foresee that I could never return. The way down is slippery, and the rubble would collapse behind me. When I'm ready to die, I shall slide down there and let the monsters feast on my bones. Updated my journal. Okay, well that's pleasant. Done. So, it's a one-way ticket is what he's telling me, so I'm not going to go there yet. Uh, but we, we now have it marked on our map. Uh, well, let's explore the outside area first, then we'll start going into the buildings. What is this? The blacksmith. Ooh. We can get something new and fancy. Uh, adders here, slouch our... Okay. Sorry, you... No clot charms are new. Hold on. Where, yeah, you can have that. And adders here as well. And these areas are not marked. All right. So they're probably just little... Itty bitty homes. Some cursed thugs. 213 copper commons. Where's that go? To inner cursed. Okay. So it does have multiple layers, just like the hive. Or sigil, I guess. So we're on a different plane than we were. Sigil sits in the center of all the planes. We're actually on a plane now in a city of cursed, to my understanding. I just don't know what plane we're on. Uh, is it... It starts with a C, right? I think I've heard it before. It was talked about previously with, I don't know, somebody. There's a lot of thugs here. Interesting. Okay. Grain silo. Uh, what's going on back here? Lover's ban and whispering flask. Can I talk? The guard pauses long enough to say, you didn't see nothing, not if you know what's good for you. He turns back to his victim. I wonder if that's part of like a quest later on. Where'd you hide it, Jansen? Did I talk to the citizen? Let's try that. This man is bruised and bloody. His face is puffed, swollen from the savage beating administered by the curse by cursed guards. He does not speak, but spits out a tooth and a mouthful of blood. 
All right. All right. Well, we got this lovers band plus two to armor class. Which ah, she needs another ring. I'll just give it to her. Oh yeah, I also want to talk to my companions about Done. what we just experienced. So let's finish exploring outside here. Then we're going to start talking to our companions, uh, because I want to know what Anna's torment is. So let's uh, let's start with her. Aye. What is it you want then? In the maze, Ravel said you were tormented. What did she mean? Anna frowns. She meant nothing she did. Barmy hag talk it was. Are you sure? It was nothing. If you don't want to know what she was saying... Wait, if you don't know what she was saying, I don't either. Well, if you want to talk about it, I'm less... I... Anna's gaze drops for a moment. I don't know why I'm traveling with you. I don't know why I went with you to find Ravel. She frowns, but she seems more confused than angry. It makes no sense it does, and I don't like it. I... Anna takes a deep breath. I have feelings for you. It feels strange it does. I don't think I've ever liked anyone. But yeah, Anna gives a half-hearted shrug without meeting your gaze. I don't know what it is about you. I mean, you're daft a lot of times. You walk like your hips are broken. You're clumsy. You smell like a zombie. <laughs> but, she sighs. I like you. Well, Anna, why didn't you say something? We could have settled this long before, or long b. It's because I think you're doomed. Anna suddenly meets your gaze. I think you walk with chains, but you don't know it yet. So I feel for you, but I'm afraid for you. And that's killing me, it is. I can't let you come to harm, but I don't know what to do to stop it. And kiss her. Grab the back of her neck with your free hand, and you watch Anna's feature go stone as you pull her... As you pull her to kiss... Oh my goodness. As you pull her to you and kiss her on the lips. There we go. At first, it's like kissing a wall. Then she starts slowly kissing you back, hesitant at first. Then with more confidence. Her teeth... Her teeth lightly biting your upper lip. You hear her snarl on the back of her throat, and her tail starts snaking around your leg, and squeezing, each squeeze matching one of her bites. Would you two cut it out before I have to get a Davis over here to separate the two of you? Mort humps. Or at least allow me to cut in. As you kiss, you suddenly notice that Anna's skin is becoming warm. It's radiating heat like hot coals. You pull back, Anna's teeth giving one last bite, and she looks at you in confusion, then anger. What is it then? Am I not good at it? Am I? No, it's your skin. Why are you getting so warm all of a sudden? I? Anna frowns looks down at herself. You notice small wisps of smoke are trailing from the edges of her jerkin. Fiend blood it is. She raises an eyebrow. Never had that happen before though. What? No one's ever kissed you before? She shrugs. No one ever dared to. And even if they did, I doubt it would have been like that. I'll take that as a compliment then. I. Uh, Anna glances around, and her tail's flicking erratically. Are we gonna keep moving on? Are we gonna keep moving on now, or what? We don't have time to be standing and chatting. We don't. Uh, should I? Well, I'm not done kissing you yet. Come here. Okay. She steps back, alarmed. Nay, who knows what would happen next? Maybe my body will turn to flame. It will. Yeah, and your lips keep your distance. All right, this time. Let's move on. All right. I guess she's been romanced. Works for me. Uh, let's go to the houses over here. I'm gone. So I'm assuming they're not going to be super big. And then, uh... Because they're not marked, it's going to be, yeah. Little dwellings. Hi. Anna? Right. Use your thieving right. skills. Silver-headed hammer. Alright, we'll take that. Alright. I'm gone. And nothing. Fantastic. I'm gone. Alright, let's go see the blacksmith. Hmm? Why not? Got it. Motley axe, magic punch daggers. Nope, he doesn't like that. Alright. Ah, uh, boy. 
Do I still have the silver headed hammer? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you, auto saves. His name is Crumple Punch. Well, let's talk to him. The sour looking, burly man glares at you as you interrupt his work. He seems a little slow, but earnest. Not as poisonous as the others in this town. I? What do you want? Uh, who are you? I'm Crumple Punch Malako, the town smith. You want something? Yeah, I would like to look at your wares. What do you got for me? Assassin's Knuckles. 1 to 10 piercing, enchanted plus 3, causes stunning, silence, and poison. So that would be an upgrade for Anna, right? She can't use it. She can use the magic punch daggers. 1 to 4 piercing. I think what she has is better than this. I don't think she can use the Assassin's Knuckles, which seems a little weird to me. I it's the knife. Ooh, Notch Dagger. Hmm. Full Smiter. Only has a fighter. Fiend Femur. Yeah, the only person I can equip anything on is, uh, is her. I guess I could try to get a better dagger. Let's see what I got. This is 2 to 7, plus 2, and then poison damage. I think I'll keep that. Alright, Smith. The Smith looks at you irritably. What do you want now? Uh, have you heard anything about a Deva in Cursed? A what? Deva? Ain't that one of them angel things? No, we ain't got one here. He pauses. Do you want something of me? Yeah. Let's try and sell anything to him. You might hold on to this because it says once used for ceremonial purposes, but the high quality stiletto will, will go away. A little split. Hi. What does Anna's do? Yeah, two to eight. It's a higher damage than the uh, magic punch daggers. I am curious though. I'm going to quick save here. Hmm? Right. If she stealths up. Like a shadow I am. Right, so she can do that. Can she enter stealth mode over here? Like a shadow I am. Got it. Like a shadow I am. Nope, he's still hostile, man. What's the point of having stealth? Alright, well, I don't want to kill him yet. I might do it later, but uh. But not right now. Alright, let's get out of here. Go to the grain I'm silo. Gone. It sucks because whenever you use your stealth and then you interact with anything, it, it just cancels your stealth. Anyway, let's talk to Roberta. Roberta. You see a well dressed middle aged woman. She has a scowl on her face and appears to be looking for someone or something. Greetings. She stops and stares at you for a moment before answering. Who are you and what do you want of me? I don't remember my name. She looks at you with mild surprise. Really? Are you by chance a petitioner? I understand that they often lose their memories. What's a petitioner? She pauses to think for a moment. Petitioners are those who have died and had their bodies reform on the plane that most closely reflects their beliefs in life. They usually have no knowledge of their previous existence. Perhaps this is the case with you. Possibly. This rebirth. How many times can this happen? Well, I'm not an expert in, in these affairs, but it is my understanding that it happens but once. Upon death, the spirit then returns to the plane itself. Unless, of course, you have traveled to another plane. If that is the case, then upon death you obtain oblivion. Well, I see. In any case, I have no name to give you. She offers you her hand. Good day to you, Cutter. I am Roberta. Taking her hand and bowing. Well met, Lady Roberta. Uh, I believe you had some questions for me. Yes, lady. I'm at your service. Please ask them. I'm looking for a deva. I've been told he's incursed. She pauses to think. I've heard that rumor as well. Unfortunately, I'm unable to help you. I do not know the whereabouts of such a creature. You should inquire at the administration office in the town square. Uh, let's see. You seem upset. Is something amiss? She frowns. Yes, my husband, Carl Parfidor, is not where he told me he would be. This is not the first time that he has lied to me about his whereabouts, and I'm beginning to, to I'm beginning to think that he she pauses for a moment. I'm beginning to think he is with another woman, a harlot. And why would you think that? She sighs. He was quite a ladies' man before he wed, 
especially among that type of woman, and I've heard rumors. She looks angry. If I find the rumors to be true, then I have a surprise for her. A surprise? Yes. She lifts her skirt, exposing her inner thigh. You see a sheath dagger strapped to her leg. She draws the blade and gives you a wicked smile. I think finding this protruding from his back would constitute a surprise. Do you not agree? She puts the blade away. So you intend to kill him? Updated my journal. Her smile slowly fades as she considers her words. Finally, she sighs and sheathes her blade. I would if I could, but no, I am being a fool. Kara and I are, are no longer intimate. I can never get close enough to deliver such a blow. She looks away for a moment. Only one of his women could. Okay. Anything of interest happening here besides you wanting to kill your husband? She thinks for a moment. I've heard that a young woman recently disappeared. The daughter of some barkeep. I know nothing of the details other than that. Other than that, I can think of nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, can you tell me about Cursed? She smiles at you and laughs. Cursed is a dung heap, and we are the excrement that fills it. She shrugs. Nothing more need be said on this subject. Okay. Uh, who's in charge here? Tobis Giljoff. He can be found at the administration office in the town square. What can you tell me about Tobis? Tobis can be a rather intense individual. She pauses to think. I know little about him other than the fact that he is a Gith Zarai and a wizard. Okay, well that was fun. Let's go into the uh, granary silo. Just because it seems like it would be small. Okay. Looks like we stumbled upon Dumb. something. You see an empty pen. Oh my goodness. You see an empty pentagram. Uh, the air in, in it is dry and cold. A feeling of great evil permeates the area. Okay. I wonder if I can interact with that later for like a I'm quest. I'm gone. I'm gone. Alright, so. I'm gone. So there's a Nabat or Nabat here, Kitla, Dona, Kisho. This area is pretty, pretty large. Okay. It's a massive tavern. Holy crap. I start using those whispering flasks on him. Now, does someone have bandages? Yes, she does. Done. All right, I do want to kind of map this area out real quick. Oh, there's a merchant. Does he get mad if I take his? I don't want his cheese. Never mind. Delon or Dallin. I don't want to start a conversation because I'm about to call it an episode. I just want to map it out, see who we need to talk to. Uh, quite a quite a few people it looks like. Tainted bars. Okay, it's an awful name. Frosty mint candy. No one cares that I took it. This enormous monstrosity was apparently intended as a joke that no one got. It is dusty and un untended. Okay, yeah, there's a handful of people to talk to here. I think I mapped out the whole area, right? Looks like there's stuff down there. But it might be access from, like, upstairs or something. I don't know. Do not know. Alright, well, I think I'm going to call the episode here. And the next one, we'll start talking to the people in the Trader's Gate Tavern. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope to see y'all in the next episode.